Hi, everybody, and welcome to episode 145 of the I Rock Knits podcast. Today, I have a friend that will be joining me to do my chatting with friends section, and her name is Ginny. And we had about a one hour conversation that was just great about all things knitting. And so that will be coming up shortly. But at the beginning of this video, I just wanted to remind you all that the second half of the video is now over on Patreon. So if you want to see the rest of the information that I usually share, things like audiobooks, tips and tricks, um, things that I purchased, what I'm making, what my designs um, are looking like, then you need to be a member of my Patreon group. And there are memberships for $2, $4, and $10 a month, and you can join and exit at any time. But I would really appreciate the support over there of this new thing that I'm trying. Um, it has been a learning curve, I will say, but if you would please join me um, over there on the Patreon section, I would be very grateful. I do have a couple of things to share with all of you today before we get to Ginny's chat, and that is that on the Patreon group, we are doing a book talk, and that is the Mad Honey book by Jody Picoult, and I am super excited to be discussing this book. It is challenging. It comes with a lot of um, kind of warnings about um, domestic abuse, um, um, suicide, um, children. It is not, um, I have not found it to be graphic in any way, but very thought provoking. The things that are said by some of the characters make you just stop and think. And that is the part that I want to discuss with other people. So we are going to be holding that book talk on May 1st at 6 p.m. And I didn't want those of you who would like to read the book and join us for that to miss it if you hadn't already joined Patreon because you wouldn't know about it. So at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, we'll be discussing um, that book, Mad Honey by Jody Picoult. And I would love to have some of you join me. Then we're going to have a knit together time where we're just going to have open knitting and that's going to be on Friday night, May 17th at 6 p.m. I may change that um, to be an hour later or an hour earlier. I'm still getting responses from the survey that I did and it seems like those were too kind of tied, but it will be on Friday, May 17th. So um, you can mark your calendars for that too, just to have a talk um, and knitting time together on Zoom with all of us that want to participate in that. I would like to do last week's giveaways as well because if you're not on Patreon and I do them over there, you won't know <laughs> um, kind of who won some of the prizes. So for I did the questions this week and I'll be answering those over on Patreon when I record this next section. But um, I did have the end of the quarter questions. So this is the for me, the fourth quarter, because I started the question thread last year at this time. Um, we we were going through the beginning of April, and so I did every three months I had a drawing. And so the drawing um, this time went to Mara Girl, and that is Janice from San Antonio, Texas. And Janice, you are going to win, oops, I have it in a bag, um, a bunch, a pack of mini skeins a little tin that has um, some of those little um, cord stoppers in them as well, as well as a tape measure that is in there. And you will get one of these little nifty wooden rulers. So all those are going out to Janice. And um, thanks for your question. I will be answering it shortly for you. And then um, the prize from last time was those that seven skeins of that mar yarn and that was um and the pattern book and i already oh i guess i didn't steal up the bag but you'll all remember what it looks like i think it's that green yarn that maya and the pattern book that goes with it and that is going out to jen loves yarn and that is my friend jen who started the knitting up north podcast with jen and karina um, and I just watched them last night. If you're not watching them, they are Minnesotans who um, I have known online for a little while, but we finally met um, met up and talked about um, knitting and things at Sweater Camp. And so um, I am also hoping to have Jen and Karina on the podcast with their five favorite knits of all time. 
Um, but Jen, you won the seven skeins of Mara, and I don't know that I have your address. I might in my phone, but I don't think so. So get in touch with me, and I will get that out in the mail to you as well. From here on out, the giveaways will be done over on Patreon, and I have a great two skein giveaway today, so I'll be sharing that um, and what you need to comment in the. Th and then I have one last thing to share here, and that is uh, my new design that is coming out. Well, actually, it'll be tomorrow, but uh, for all of you that are watching right away, um, this is my Spring Fever Day scarf and shawl, and it is a collaboration with Brown Sheep Yarn, and that is um, a company that I have worked with a number of times. I use their yarn for my Knit Words book, a lot of the samples in the Knit Words book. What I find with Brown Sheep Yarn, that it's good, hearty, lots of colors, tons of colors, and it's less expensive. I love working with their yarn and I reached out to them a few months ago and asked them if they would like to do a collaboration because they have a booth at Yarn Fest and I will be in Loveland, Colorado next Thursday, Friday, and Saturday coming up here and teaching six different classes and they will have a booth there. And so I asked if they would be willing to give me yarn support and they said yes. So they sent me four skeins of this beautiful, beautiful yarn. It is fingering weight. It is a sock yarn, and this is the little scarf. I think neckerchiefs and scarves, neck scarves, are kind of the new hot thing that people are knitting and wearing. Um, this takes less than one 50 gram ball. So the brown sheep yarn does come in 50 gram skeins, so about 215 yards, and it is stockinette with um, yarn over increases as well as a little textured stitch and then a beaded bottom border. However, I know everyone does not want to bead their border, but I love that. I think that is so it gives a little weight, it gives it a little shimmer. Um, and those are just seed beads, but it's slow going to put that last row on. Probably took me a few hours to put it on. Um, but I think it's really fun to bead with that. And I do have a video in um, the, the pattern for how to do that. Uh, I will say um, that the textured section is really quite fun to knit and easy. And so this is a very quick, would be a great gift knit. Um, but I didn't know that everyone would want to do a neckerchief. <laughs> so I went ahead and did a shawl version as well. So this would be a one skein shawl with the option to make it larger. So this is the same or similar numbers. And then I just repeated the stockinette and the texture rows. And then on the bottom of this one, I put larger beads and I put two stitches in between every large bead. So it's still a lot of beads, but I found these beads on Amazon where you get a box with 20 colors and then each little bin is filled and they had all of these colors that were just perfect for this spring shawl. So this shawl is called Spring Fever Day. When you des design and name a pattern, you have to find a name that no one has used before. And Spring Day didn't work and Spring Fever didn't work <laughs> because there were tons of patterns called that, which is fine, right? You can name it something similar or the same, but then when people go to find it, they can't always find it because the search engine is not, you know, perfect or you have to put my name and my last name is hard to spell for people. So I decided to call it Spring Fever Day because recently we've had a couple of nice days where I've gotten spring fever, but then it's turned to be not spring. <laughs> and so you get one Spring Fever Day where you're just excited about the weather. I did not do a garter tab to start the top of this shawl. Uh, actually, you cast on a whole bunch and you start from here and then you get the garter at the top. That does not bother me in the least that there is not garter all the way across the top, but I know that it will bother perfectionist. And so I do have a notation in the pattern that if you want to do a dark garter tab cast on and make these stitches all have the garter, you certainly could do that. Um, it will make the shape of the shawl go like this a little more, more crescenty. 
but I know people who shy away from garter tab cast ons because they just think they're futsy. I would tend to agree with that, that they can be a little futsy. And um, I teach a lot of beginners and I wanted this to be a pattern that was accessible. And so that's why it doesn't have that garter tab. So basically you cast on stitches across the top and then the garter stitches start over here along the edge to keep that from rolling. And there's just a yarn over and a yarn over um, and a knit front back right along the edge. Um, so the option is to do the larger shawl. And if you have another skein of yarn, you can just keep going. You just repeat the stockinette and the texture and the stockinette and you can get a large, easy to knit, very um, mindless to knit, um, a public knitting, you know, watching TV knitting, um, but you get just a textured shawl. So there's not a lot of lace in this. So there's not a lot to concentrate for, but you could, you know, keep going and make it longer and longer. Um, but it does not feel next to skin soft. Like this is not something you pick up in the yarn store and you say, oh, feel this, it's so soft. But I really think we need to stop doing that, right? If you want a shawl or a garment or a cowl that's not gonna pill like the Dickens, that's not a single ply, that is gonna wear and last, it did soften up quite a bit in the washing but it definitely has a little bit of structure. It is not as drapey as say something that would have um, kind of silk in it or alpaca, right? It's gonna have a little bit more structure, but I kind of like that. It comes in, oh, I think seven colorways. I will put a picture in of the colorways that they have in this yarn. It's called Wild Foot Hand Paint. So they have 10 colors in this yarn and a 50 gram skein is $16. So you can make the little uh, scarf for $16. And I think that that's, you know, kind of nice that you can get um, a skein like this. It's a hand painted, you know, that's another process. So it's not solid. So it does take them longer. It will hold up to washing and wearing. So if you want to make socks out of this, it does have nylon in it. Um, and it would, you know, would make a great sock yarn if you just want spring socks, that would be kind of fun too. It is a super wash yarn um, with the nylon in it. So I really thought that this was a perfect color for Corey, right? Raspberry and orange, those are my two favorites. And if you purchase this pattern, you get both. So I am not making you purchase both patterns. I just um, put it into uh, two different patterns. When you buy it, you'll get two PDFs so that you can just print out the instructions you need and you didn't have to print out a whole bunch of pages to get both of them. So they both have the full set of instructions separately. And as I said, that will be going out uh, tomorrow. So if you'd be willing to go over and give it a like or a favorite or put it in your queue on Ravelry or purchase it. All those things help me to move up in the algorithm so people can see the shawl. And then it will be on display in the market at Yarnfest on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So yeah, I'm pretty excited that this one, I really wanted to thank two of my testers, <laughs> Nicole and Kathy. At the last minute, I decided to add the second shawl and I had to knit it and, um, and it was a real challenge to figure out how many repeats to do in order to use all the yarn, but not run short. And they had to rip back and we had to shorten, well, we all had to shorten the sections. I think I had 12 here and now I have 10 just to make sure that everyone got and you know that's always hard when you have testers who are knitting along and they have to rip back they know that that's part of the process when they sign up but these two went above and beyond at the last minute and said hey i'm already knitting the scarf but i'll knit the shawl too <laughs> so i really want to give them a huge shout out nicole and kathy um for doing that for me because otherwise this one would not be ready and um, I had a lot of the scarf people finish really fast and they are wearing them already. So I'm gonna put the scarf on for all of you. What I found if, is if I fold over the top half, it doesn't ride up on the back of my neck. So I just fold over that a little bit. 
then it doesn't push up my back of my hair, which is the thing that bugs me when I have short hair. And then I just tie it in a little knot. And um, my husband said, don't tie it twice. And I said, yes, you have to tie it twice because it's gotta, you know, it's gotta come out in a little knot. And this part is also, you know, all a little wider over here. So you can lay that part down and just um, tie it in a little knot and off you go. I don't think everyone is a neck scarf wearer, but I think everyone could be. It's easy uh, to put on. It, it, I think it makes it look very <laughs> French. <laughs> um, yeah, and so it's a lot of fun, but you could also just wear this one um, in the front with the back coming around. I also put a um, magnet gem on it in the pictures. So if you don't want to wrap it like that, it does. If you just like something on your shoulders, you can just wrap it and put a little um, shawl pin right there. That, you know, that works well. But see, you can also put it just on as like a little cowl just in the front and just be wrapped around to the back. So if you're going outside in the winter and you don't like a big bulky thing around your neck, this is quite lightweight and then those little beads just show up right there and you could just wear it like that. Maybe I'll wear it like this for the rest of the podcast. So yes, the spring fever day scarf, spring fever day shawl. So on Ravelry, if you type in spring fever day, it'll pop up, but it'll be scarf slash shawl because you, I want people to know that they're getting both patterns and not to be confused. If I just call it a shawl or a shawlette or a scarf, I don't, you know, that will make sense. So yeah, there it is. I'm really, really excited about having that done. Also have a little announcement to make about the Pinky Swear socks and hat. So in order to give my testers more time, especially my large footed testers, I just could not put that pattern out in good faith. They were not done. Other people finished super fast. And so I just decided to delay the release of the pattern until the next podcast. It just, yeah. So I said it would be out shortly and then I didn't put it out. <laughs> um, I thought we were ready to go and we were except for those large sizes. Um, I had one medium tester to finish maybe and two large testers and I thought, why, why are you rushing them? Yeah. You know how you, I just had a lot going on. I had a lot of testing going on and I had a lot of pattern design work and I had a couple people get in touch to do designs going forward. And so I have to kind of think about that and what I could do and put them on my schedule. And I'm teaching a ton right now. And I was just like trying to get something off my plate, right? Instead of like thinking about it and saying, it doesn't matter. It can come back out after you come back from Colorado. It doesn't have to be done before just because you said it would be. <laughs> so anyway. I just wanted to let you all know that you didn't miss the pinky sw swear hat and socks. And I will, you know, be talking about those on the next podcast. So I'm going to say goodbye for now. I just wanted to share my new design with all of you. And then I will go over and record the rest of the episode. And um, then next will be my little chat with Ginny. So until next time, bye. There we go. There she is. <laughs> we got her. Hi. Hi, Corey. <laughs> Ginny was running late and then I had an interruption. So it took us, we were a little discombobulated in the last few minutes here. Lots of text messages and miscommunication with the husband, but got it done. So I just can't do math. That's of. the problem. What? <laughs> I said, I just can't do math. You know, when yeah. I try and like figure out the time change thing, it's bad enough with my folks living in New York. They're four year, four hours ahead. And then I have friends in Seattle that are like one hour ahead. And so anyway, all math, of that to say, Ginny is in Alaska. This is my friend Ginny and she is in Alaska and I am in Minnesota. We have viewers from all over the world. So they will understand time change situations. <laughs> But yes, we had scheduled to get together this afternoon and just talk about Ginny's favorite knits. Um, let's talk about how we met. Sure. Um, I was actually just thinking about that because I um, was digging through some of just like old papers and and I found um, 
like the old planner thing from sweater camp when oh. we met at um, the darn knit anyway sweater camp in January 2020 I think I think it was like two months right before the pandemic and it was um, yeah it was it was uh, a visit that I was having with my friend Sarah uh, who lives in St. Paul um, and we came a little late to sweater camp and we walked in and all the tables were full. And then um, Corey and Amber and Matt and Renee were in this table all the way in the corner. And I, I think it was Amber that was just like, come on over here guys. Cause we were looking around and didn't know where to sit. And the rest is history. I think. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. We were sitting way back up front in the corner um, and we did have space at our table and, and I am a, total gatherer of people so I would have been like yeah sit down and we had the best time like we all really hit it off Sarah is going to be on the podcast eventually I have asked her I've reached out a couple times and she's super busy and I have to ask them to come to my house I could do Sarah on zoom but it's easier if we can see you know and talk beforehand I mean this is this was a lot of like you know email and going back and forth. And these are the questions I'll ask and we'll go through this. So I just said if she could come out sometime and she is in St. Paul, which is a trek from, from me and she's just been busy. So, um, and Matt too, Matt, I'm going to have on again, but he said, let me finish another sweater. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, okay, finish another sweater. Cause he always brings all of his great cabled sweaters and he started one again this week. So I'll be having them on as well. But yeah, that was um, our first sweater camp. And then it was canceled um, due to the pandemic. And then they had it. And then we saw each other again. So you've been back. Have you gone yep. to two or three now? Just two. I was supposed to go to three, um, the one before this last one. And and then I think I think I got COVID like yeah, right that's, beforehand. Okay. That's what I remembered. So I thought it was two, but then I was like, well, the time, I think... COVID time, it was like, your memories are weird, right? Like mm -hmm. it, it lasted forever, but now looking back, it was just like the short time in your life. And, and, and it was over a period of years, but you just kind of want to forget, forget it or something. I don't know. So yeah, we met at water camp. We sat together for several days, went out to dinner. We talked, we learned about each other and yeah. And now we're, now we're a group. <laughs> yeah we're like a table yeah. of of people and so um but Sarah does live in Fairbanks Alaska so why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got there because I think that people who live in the U.S. are um intrigued by Alaska right we many people haven't been there they don't know a lot mm -hmm. um and so tell us how you got there and you know what you do there because I know that but they won't yeah. So um, I live in Fairbanks, Alaska, which um, I don't know if you talk to people who are from Minnesota and they do the hand thing, um, <laughs> but this is Alaska and Juneau, our capital is kind of down here by where it connects to Canada. Um, Anchorage is kind of down on the coast here and I live kind of in the middle. Um, well, middle-ish uh, and Fairbanks is um, I think considered like an Arctic desert. So we actually don't get a ton of snow, but the snow that we do get pretty much hangs out from, I would say, mid-October to late April. And so it just sort of stacks up and stacks up. It's very dry here and very um, uh, not not windy at all. But um, you can see it's a beautiful sunny day out today, um, but we definitely still have a lot of snow on the ground still. So um I work uh, at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. I run the Academic Advising Center there. Um, and I've been here since 2001. I came um, as an undergrad. Um, uh, I was accepted to the University of Alaska Fairbanks and I got this pretty awesome scholarship for the first year. And I thought, well, hell, I'll just go to Alaska for a year. That'll be fun. Um, and that was 24 years ago. So <laughs> a little bit longer than a year. So were you, you must have applied to Alaska. You must have had a, a, a like you wanted to go there for some oh, yeah, reason. Yeah. I mean, 
I mean, the kids that are in college now, they probably do it a whole lot differently, but I, I'm sure that um, college is like name by from like SET and ACT. So I remember literally having two giant Xerox boxes of just stuff from colleges all over the place. Yeah. Um, and But I remember one day getting, um, I still have it somewhere, um, just this, this like brochure that had this like howling wolf with this like beautiful moon glazed mountain in the background and I was like whoa Alaska that would be so cool and my mom said absolutely not <laughs> and so um so that was so secretly like I tore off the little card asking for more information and I sent it back in and then a few weeks later I got a card um with um a bunch of the student ambassadors uh, in front of the um temperature sign there's a temperature sign at the bottom of the hill and it said negative 40 Fahrenheit and they're all in their you know ambassador jackets and one gal had her head circled and she said hey my name's Katie email me if you have any questions and we kept in communication for probably three or four months um and then um my grandmother actually paid um, for me to go visit campus and so I visited campus for a whole week and I secretly applied for admission while I was there and all these scholarships while I was there and and I got a pretty good scholarship that pay, almost paid for my first year so I figured I'll give it a try for a year we'll see how it goes and and I never left <laughs> what did you want to go into at the time did you did you have like, did they have a major that you were interested in or were you just kind of general, you know, like oh, most freshmen? Uh, I should have been. Um, and I actually talked to a lot of students about being undeclared their first semester, but I, I came to UAF as a physics major. Okay. And I, uh, but I graduated with photojournalism and Spanish. <laughs> okay. Wow. Uh -huh. That's a swing. Uh -huh. And so then how did you get into the academic advising piece? Um, you know, I, it, it's funny cause it's like not even an occupation that was like ever on my radar. Um, and I, but I knew I liked helping people and I knew I really liked UAF. Um, I really wasn't ready to go home yet and, um, uh, wasn't, wasn't sure. I knew I didn't want to be a, a photojournalist, to be honest. Like it was one of those, um, situations where I just took a lot of really cool classes and then got in touch with like really cool faculty and then they taught more classes and I took more of their classes and then it got to be well I'm like more than halfway through a journalism degree so I'll just finish this but um so I knew I wasn't actually going to go into journalism but a lot of the skills I learned in in journalism classes like um you know like interviewing people and and um you know working on deadline and yep. just like yep. good oral and written communication like it's it's helped me in in other careers and so um there was a job that opened up right after i graduated and it was actually coordinating and running the new student orientation program oh and so i did, I did that for a few years which was insane cuz it's like it's just a lot a lot a lot of work um and uh, and then I learned about admissions counseling, which is kind of like, well, it's basically a recruiter. And so you're going along all over the country recruiting students to UAF. And and I did that for just a little bit less than a year, actually. Um, and an advising position came open. And I think at the time I was like just starting graduate school at UAF um, because I got free tuition and I didn't... Um, I didn't want to travel so much anymore. Like I actually am not a humongous fan of traveling. I know a lot of people love traveling and it would yeah. probably be a, an amazing job for them, but um, I just, I'm too much of a homebody. So I applied for the advising position. I actually didn't get it the first time, um, but then I applied again, I think when it opened up again, it was seven or eight months later and I did get it. And that was in 2008. So I've been in the advising center for that long. Okay. So when did the husband come into the picture? Oh, him, that guy. Uh, let's see here. We um, we <laughs> met actually online on, on Match.com um, in 2008, the summer of 2008. And the funny story, or, or at least what the kids talk about, is there was a flood and then mommy moved in and never moved out. And it's kind of true because... <laughs> 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 I lived in a dry cabin, dry cabin, meaning I had electricity, but I did not have running water. Um, and I lived in that cabin for about three years and it was right on the, um, um, where the Tanana and the Chena river meet. And it was in August that we just got tons and tons and tons of rain. 
um, and the river crested and um, it was like probably midway up like cars. So I don't know how much that is. Like, I don't know, yeah. three or four feet yeah. it was yeah. uh, yeah. a lot of water. And um, the fire department came knocking on all the cabins the night before and was like, the river's going to crest. You need, you need to like get out of Dodge. And so I was like, well, where do I go? I was just going to hang out at my office. Cause I was like, well, I mean, it's dry there. <laughs> and <laughs> I just started dating this guy and he's like, Oh, I'll just come over to my house. You can, you can hang out at my house. And kind of the joke is that, that I never, I never went home. I mean, I, I did, but I didn't. Yeah. 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 Okay. And so when did you guys, um, the two kids, right. We've got Hazel yep, and Henry. Henry who's, yep. Henry's who's 11 and, um, Hazel who is eight going to be nine on May 1st. Wow. Yep. Yep. I know. So super, you're super busy with kids. Yep. Both Bill and I work full time and super busy with kids. So um, I don't actually get a ton of time to knit actually anymore. I I do occasionally like on car trips and and we do have a cabin um, kind of an hour outside of town. And um, so I like. Yeah, because that's new. Right. That's mm-hmm. a new development in in your life since I first met you. Do you yep. guys have land? Yep. And you've yep. built. Yeah, we, we actually found this chunk of land actually during COVID. And it was the middle of middle of winter. And it was like just shy of five acres, um, kind of at the end of uh, Chino Hot Springs Road. There's there's a road that like literally goes for 60 miles. And then at the end of it is the Chino Hot Springs Resort. So it's a natural hot springs um, where you can hang out in this outdoor rock pool and look at the Aurora and hang out at 40 below zero in this like <laughs> bathtub warm water. And um, and so we're we're about four miles shy of that, which is handy because if we were out there for a while and actually wanted a shower or you know wanted to swim with the kids we could just bring them down the road but yeah we bought the land site on scene and um I'm I'm thankfully married to a land surveyor who knew how to do a lot of like research on like when the last you know wildfires were and what the you know topographical you know elevations are of the land and 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 we we bought it and went out I think after the snow melted and it was, it was really special and awesome. And over the course of the next couple of years, we um, kind of piecemealed a cabin. Um, and so now we have a place out there to hang out. So is it near water? So you fish or do you just hike? I know you're a huge biker. So we want to talk about that because you are <laughs> all in on the biking. I am. Yeah. It's um, it is by a river. Um, and so, the, and there's a lot of really good hiking trails, but um yeah, honestly, like it's super mosquitoy in the summer. Oh, sure. <laughs> so I'm not, like I'm, yep. I'm more of a winter outdoor girl, which is kind of weird to say, but, um, but it's really fun to go out there in the winter because you've got like your wood stove and you know it's cold outside. You don't want to do anything outside, so you just have yeah. to stay in yeah. bed. I guess. Yeah. yeah. No, for sure. <laughs> so let's talk about biking. When did you get started in the biking? Oh man. Um, probably around, I would say 2006 or seven. Um, I was out of college, but, um, there was a local women's cycling group, um, that met on Thursday nights called the ladies of leisure. Um, they were not very leisurely. I'll tell you that right now. Um, (laughs) and I, I just had like kind of an old junker mountain bike with big nubby giant tires. And all these women have like super spandex and like itty bitty tires. And, and, and I was like, well, this will be fun. (laughs) And I just, I just was persistent and I just kept coming back and coming back. And I was always the last one in and I was really slow. And some of the climbs I had to get off my bike, like four or five times and just walk up the hills. But, um, I just kept coming back and coming back and, um, and, and yeah, I got better at biking and got better, a better bike. Um, and I think I didn't, I didn't do biking for weight loss, but because of it, I, I did lose quite a bit of weight. And so it got easier. And, um, and I just found a community of women that, that much like knitting, you know, you meet these people that you would like never normally probably ever connect with just yep. 
because um yep. yeah and so it's it's you know you just meet people from all walks of life and and so I I met a lot of really close girlfriends from from that writing group that are also knitters so it's like weird to have two different pieces of my life join in that way too but um yeah and, and last so year you did rag bry right I think it was yeah I think it was last year I was trying to remember I've done it twice now I've done rag bry twice now um and I've also um uh biked the Denali highway which is about a 130 mile stretch between Cantwell and Paxson kind of right in the middle and um, I've also another long bike ride I did was um, I biked the Erie Canal from uh, Buffalo to Albany. And that was oh, pretty wow. fun. So and I, I thought it would be easy. What? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought I thought the Erie Canal ride would be super easy because I'm like, it's totally flat. You're just like literally following a canal for like a bajillion miles. I think it was 470. And uh, no, it was probably one of the hardest rides I ever went on because it was gravel um, so you're kind of slow anyway, yep. but there's no hills. And I didn't realize like how much you give your leg muscles rest by like going, you know, you just use different muscles when you go up yep. a hill and then you can rest when you go down a hill, but it was like constant pedaling yeah. for 470 miles. <laughs> wow. And Ragbri is the ride across Iowa. So you mm -hmm. start on the river on one side, you ride across, you dip your tire in on each side and then you camp along the way, right? And how yep. far is that ride? How many I think miles? it was, I think it was pretty close. It's always like around, like I would say between 430 and 460, depending on the route. They, they do a different route every single year, but it's always going west to east. You dip your back tire in the Missouri and your front tire in the Mississippi, I think. And yeah. And so, yeah. yeah. And, and it's a, it's a, like a week, a week, right? They, tr they get it done in a week. About yep, seven days. Yep. I think it's roughly. about seven days. Yep. Yeah. And, and, um, I, I like, I love it because, well, you gotta like people. It's a really humongous event. I mean, there's yeah, like, I was going to say there are so many people on the road, thousands and thousands. And, and I think, you know, for registered riders, I want to say, I'm probably getting this wrong, but it's probably like 15 or 20,000 riders. But then, you know, you're going through these itty bitty towns. So you're going to pick up, what are they called? Like, like add-ons or stragglers and so that adds a couple more thousand um and so it's because yeah, some people just ride a little bit of the way yep they, yeah they they'll just do like one day yep yeah but, but it's I, I call it like a week-long um tailgate party because you're literally like what I loved about it and and you know I, I'm not a religious person whatsoever but but I was like god this is like as close to a spiritual thing I've ever done where you're literally on the road for seven days your only job is to ride your bike and eat like that's your job for a week and you meet so many amazing people from all over the world and um you're just never alone and and I've gone with a couple the both times I've gone I've gone with groups of friends um but it, what's nice about the ride is is you you can ride your own ride like everybody rides a little bit faster or slower so you kind of all start off together because you're always ending at the same spot every night um and you always start off together but you know you might want to dive off and get pie from this church lady or somebody want, might want to dive off in this direction and get ice cream at this place so you just you can ride your own ride but you're never alone which is neat so do they feed you no, no. Well, it depends. There's some outfits that um, you can pay extra and it's um, like a charter service where yeah. like I, I definitely splurged um, the second year I did it. And I rode with this group called the Pedaling Pandas and they um, provide you a tent and they have it set up and ready for you um, and an air mattress and clean towels every day. And then they provided, I think, one or two dinners. Um, but for the most part, you're kind of on your own. Um, and if you don't want to pay extra for that charter service, then um, they do have a truck where you can like dump your stuff. But then you're kind of, I don't know, maneuvering around 15,000 other people looking for their bag. And then yeah. after a whole day of like 70 miles of riding in the Iowa hot sun, you got to set up your tent and find a shower. And I said, you know what, I'll pay the money to have somebody else have my tent ready for me. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Kylie went to school in Grinnell, which is right in the middle of Iowa, like mm -hmm. right. It's at the kind of the crossroads of north, south, east, west, and there are train tracks and whatever. And there are tons of Grinnellians who don't live there anymore because it's a small town with a big university. But 
um, they they do the rag bride and Megan, who I wrote the first my first book with, her husband rides rag bride every year with his father, and they they have ridden it. So I was very familiar. It's sponsored. It was sponsored by the newspaper, yep. the Des Moines Register. And what yep. does rag bride stand for? So it's the Register's annual great bike ride across to Iowa. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Right. And it's the Des Moines Register was is the newspaper. So that's why it's it's abbreviated that way. So I should explain that to people because yeah. there are people are probably like, what is she saying? What is she yeah. saying? But yeah, yeah. no idea. <laughs> okay. So somewhere in this history came learning how to knit. And mm -hmm. I know a yarn store. There was a yarn store involved. So tell me about that. How'd you learn? Yeah. To knit? So I actually didn't learn to knit till um, my freshman year in college. My my grandmother knit and my mother crocheted and I crocheted a little bit. Like I could make a square that eventually like would go like this and then like this. I didn't really know what I was doing. I mean, I don't even know now what it's called, single crochet or double crochet. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but I learned how to um, knit in college when I um, became friends with a gal named um, Pam and she... Um, she really wanted to learn how to quilt. And I was a big time quilter, uh, which is kind of weird because I um, I was a college student. So was like I didn't have all the equipment or anything, but I knew how to quilt. And I um, so I taught her how to quilt and she taught me how to knit. And now she's like a crazy quilting, like Etsy selling crazy <laughs> woman, like so is like, like a maniac. And awesome. I have a sewing machine and I I do still quilt, quilt now and then, but we kind of traded hobbies. And so, yeah. And so she taught you. And then was there a local yarn store for you to purchase yarn at the time? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I, um, I was really, really um, honest and biased, but I don't think I've ever been to another yarn shop since uh, Inua, which is spelled I-N-U-A. Um, and uh, Inua Yarn Shop, Wool Shop was in Fairbanks. It was ran out, out of um, Leah's house for 19 years before she had like a brick and mortar storefront. So you would just like drive out to this woman's house and like kind of go through her whole upstairs. Different rooms were all just, you know, different types of wool and different types of yarn. And um, she eventually moved out of there into um, a shop that was kind of in this weird industrial district that like you really like weren't going to just like wander in like you had to look for it. You had to know it was there. Um, it was great. And she, of course, expanded. And then she moved her shop actually right across the street from the university, um, which is kind of a happening place. There's, you know, like a pizza joint and a coffee shop and, you know, a gas station and a used bookstore all kind of right there at the corner of um, where the university is and actually where that temperature sign was. Um, <laughs> I talked about at the beginning and and, and she was there for quite a few years. And, and the great part about having the shop there is she got so much just walk, walk in traffic, um, especially with um, the university has a large animal research station, which is where they research muskox. And for okay. knitters that um, know about muskox, they produce kiviet, which yep. is um, really amazing fiber. And so Leah worked with the with the large animal research station to provide a lot of kiviet at her shop so there was um, a lot of people looking for that <laughs> there um but yeah it's it, it I, i'm sure like a lot of other knitters um the wool shop was like so much a part of my life and it and it closed in actually november 2018 when she finally kind of retired um but it was I mean, I, I had my wedding shower there. I had, I spent two maternity leaves there and I, um, you know, I, I get emotional when I talk about it, but you know, it was, it, it was like this place where, you know, you were just safe and, and I had a really, um, kind of hard time with my first baby. I had pretty bad postpartum depression and, and it was like the middle of December and it was 40 below zero. And it was, um, I had Henry 11 days before Sandy Hook. And so it was just like a lot of like awful emotions yep. and hormonal craziness. And, and I literally would just pack everything I needed for an entire day. And I just 
went as soon as the shop opened and I stayed until it closed every single day for probably seven or eight weeks. Um, and it was, it was my like savior. Like I just, you know, anytime I had this like screaming baby, I could just like hand it to one of these like ladies that were sitting on the couch and were like <laughs> totally welcoming and amazing. And, um, I don't think I could have done it without, without that, just that support of just fiber friends. That's a great story. Is that how you met Sarah? Was through the yarn mm-hmm. store? I can't remember. Sort, sort of. Actually, I mean, it was it was a pretty, it, it was probably our biggest connection. We met actually um, at the university. She was a graduate student and I was an undergrad and I was the student assistant for like the dean of enrollment management at the time. And she was a graduate student. She came up to the third floor where I worked to turn in some graduate paperwork. And she was wearing this, um, I remember she was wearing this, um, I guess, shrug that she knit, which was basically like she knit a tube um, for a sleeve and then a slit that like, you know, allowed you to put your other arm in. So it was basically like a tube with a slit. So it was a cardigan without a body essentially. And I, and I was like, whoa, that's really great. Did you knit that? And of course, knitters love talking about things that they did. <laughs> and so yep. she's like, yeah, I did. And and then she told me about how her little group of yarny friends were meeting at a local coffee shop on certain nights. And, and I just showed up I, on a whim. I just showed up. And so we just um, became friends that way and kept meeting meeting up and 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 again would meet at the yarn shop there. And she taught classes there and I taught classes there. So um, we just became really close and a lot of it had to do with knitting in the yarn shop. Yeah. Where did you grow up? I don't think you said. No, um, I grew up in upstate New York in Rochester. Okay. Right, I think right I think I knew that, but I don't think we said what how far it would have been for you to go to Alaska. Yeah, yeah that's right? true. Like if, Pretty far. if you were in Washington State, not as big a deal, probably, right? But yeah. if you're in New York, that's or from almost anywhere in the US, Alaska's way out there. <laughs> I mean it's a long way. Okay. Let's talk about your favorite knits. What did you bring to share today? Oh God. I brought a lot <laughs> just because I, was, I wasn't sure what you were going to ask me. So I just was like, if everything within arm reach, you grab it. Um, yeah. Just show us know, things. I, we love I'm, seeing I'm stuff. actually probably wearing my favorite knit. Um, so this is, I, I knit, um, the throwback cardigan and I wore it at sweater camp this year. I've knit a few sweaters now. Um, and, and every single one of them, like, I'm just not, I don't love like either. I just like knit the sh- sleeves too short, or maybe I cropped it too much, or maybe I like altered the pattern to like, I don't know. So I have a, a bunch of sweaters that I knit, but this is the one where I'm like, I could wear it every day. I could wear it every day. It, it feels great. It's out of, um, uh, Miss Babs Yowza. And then I think I have like maybe some dream and color in there too. Um, but I just, it was, it was a giant pain in the neck to knit because I did color work, not in the round. Like <laughs> most people steaked it. I think Renee steaked hers and I was like, Oh they gosh, did. so smart. <laughs> um, so it was really like, you know, a beast to knit, but I, but I love it. It's like one of those things where I just, I, I, I love it. And, um, Another that's how I knit my hero back in the day. I didn't yeah. stick it. And you know, doing color work on the reverse side is not it's not hard to follow the chart, but carrying your floats and stuff is just the opposite. And it, it I can't yeah. think it can kind of trick your mind, right? You're just like, Am I doing yeah. this right? Turn around and look. You're just kind of everything's backwards. I don't know. It, you can't see the stitches. So that I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. And it was fine. I mean, I, I have plenty of knits. Like I would consider myself and, and I know there's as a knitter, you're either a process knitter or a product knitter is what I've heard. And um, I'm very, very much a process knitter because I have about four bajillion things on the needles right now and I do it for a while and that was fun. Okay, next. <laughs> and so I, I have a lot of things always to finish, but um, I think this um this was one instance where I was, I was knitting as a product knitter. Like I wanted the product and same thing with, um, oh gosh, uh, Andrea Mowry's shift cow for whatever reason, like I, I hated every second knitting it <laughs> and I'm sorry to anybody who really loves it, but I've knit probably three of them because I love the finished product. Like I wear it all the time, but as I'm knitting it, I'm like, God, I hate this, but I really want it to be done so I could wear it. 
Um, yeah, I, I agree. It's not complicated, but slip stitches, they just, and it doesn't grow, you know, you know because you're slipping. I don't know. I, I can see that where it's just kind of a pain to knit. Yeah. I can't yeah. imagine doing the sweater. No, no. I think Sarah started it or got the yarn to start it, but um, yeah, I, but I done it's the beautiful. Hat. The sweater's yeah. beautiful. Well, but I'm yeah, not a process it, knitter. Like I am right. always. How <laughs> fast can I get to the end result? I don't mm, even think I no, like no, the process. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all that much, right? I there is a a, a sense of um, urgency always with my knitting. I it, I don't find it. Well, it's not that it's not relaxing, but I'm not engaged in the stitches, right? Like I am so easily distracted by other things in my house or to do instead of just being engaged in the stitches. I, it's just not, I don't, I don't think about each stitch and just calming and breathing and kind of more of that meditation. It, I just don't have that in me. I will pick up my phone 16 times in an hour at night when I'm knitting, especially stockinette, which I'm doing on a shawl right now. I, I'm, I'm just like, get off your phone. I had to put my phone farther away because uh -huh. I set my knitting down and, and get it because I'm, I'm just not engaged in the process yeah. of stockinette. And, and I've said this before, I need lots of things to be happening, to be going on, right? Like, so that I can... Um, be engaged in something. I have to be doing like color work, cables, something has to be happening. Otherwise I, I, I cannot stand a garter stitch, anything. It's, it, so I, funny. I, just, I can't. And people knit full guard, full on garter stitch shawls and love every minute. You yeah. know, I think, yeah, no, I, I, I think a, a different time in my life, I would say the exact same thing. Um, but I think with working full time and having two kids and, just right now in my life, like I can't have anything that um, is like super intensive when it comes to like charting or lace. Yep. And I've done yep. all of those things and I love yep. them. But I think that I think the point of my life right now, I mean, this is why I've knit like seven of these Musselberg hats. Like it's literally just like an entire tube of knitting. And it's something yep. that I can just throw in my bag. And um, and then, you know, when I'm at, you know, waiting in the car line for the kids or something I literally can pick it out and I'm just knitting and knitting and knitting the only time yep. you have to think is at the very beginning and at the very end yep. but but you're right that's I mean just I, I like think if my it... friend Megan she's knit I don't even know how many three kids full-time job runner there's not time there's not time for like not that she can't do intricate but she yeah. will you know she bangs out you know 26 socks and then 26 muscle burrows just because it is eat on the go knitting knitting in the round, pick it up, put it down, yep. can do 20 stitches or 200 stitches, whatever. Yep. Yeah, I get yep. that. I get that. And when Kylie was little, I would have said the same thing. Right. But yep. she's not even in the house anymore. So, yeah. you know, yeah. I, I just don't have those distractions in my, my day, um, which I, I yeah. need people because I'm such an extrovert, but show us something. Let's look at something besides okay, well, what you're um, wearing. Um, which we all wore at sweater camp, by the way. We and did. We, and we took you, a picture. I should of, send you the picture. Uh, you could post the picture. Of the um, throwback um, sweater with yeah. all of us. Mine is still not on the needle. Uh, still on the needles. I don't have much left. You'll get but... there. You'll get there. Oh, for sure. I just I just have not had time. I took on too many design things in a row. And so there has been no selfish knitting at all in the last two months. Well, it, yeah, I'll totally get back to it. But. I, when people ask me to do design stuff, I'm just like, sure, send me yarn. And then the yarn sits there. And then there's that guilt of that. And I should say, you know what, could you send me yarn in July? Could you send me yarn in October? Could, you know, instead of send it now, because then I get three, you know, three yarn thing commissions. And then I'm like, which is lovely. Yeah. But it, there's a sense of pressure around then producing for them and knitting prototypes and then ripping out and then knitting the actual thing. And yeah. So I'm just behind. So I'd love I think to that, see somebody, some stuff that you've made. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think that's, I don't, I, I'm the same way. I don't really like pressure knitting. And I think that's why I've, I've never really 
done the like the Christmas knits for people because it's like it's it's then it's not enjoyable. But I I've done I've definitely knit things for um for the fair, and then that's like a scramble because you're always yeah. like I knit um. Let's see here. Oh, I knit the bouse bousa. I'll have to send you the actual link, but I knit this. Um, oh, that's pretty. I've seen that before. That's really yep. pretty. Yep. And I got, I think, first place, which was funny because I just, I um, entered this one kind of on a whim. I had just finished it. The one that I really entered that I wanted like to win was the sweater and I did get first place too, but I was the, the only cardigan. So I just like, yay. Um, <laughs> Um, but I also, so that one has again. really interesting decreases in the pattern, right? Like it decreases in the color work. I think at the so. Top. Yeah. Yeah. I, I honestly yeah. can't really remember, but it was really fun yeah. to knit. It's out of, um, Jameson, which is just like an amazing yarn. Oh, I know. I love it. But, um, I have yeah, a hat and I have mitts on the needles to match mittens and I just can't, I got to get back to them because I love working that color work with that yarn, that pairing. Just- Yes. Yes. And it's, and it's, and it's like a woolly wool. And I know some people are like anti woolly wool, but like, Oh, I just, I love woolly wool. Oh, no one should be anti woolly wool anymore. (laughs) Some people are. I mean, Oh, for sure. But this podcast, (laughs) we need to be more about the environment and our superwash wools are the worst. Our dyes and our superwash processes and, and just the longevity of superwash. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, we're much, we should all be knitting the woolly wools. We should go back and time. Actually, a yarn store in the Twin Cities just opened. I have not been there. It's It's been open a couple months. People have been, but um, Dandelion Yarn, um, mm. it's on the opposite side. They're all, all wool. Like they're really, oh, that's cool. they're, they really want to do natural fibers is what I heard. Um, and I think that's true from just the pictures I've seen, but I haven't been there. I'm going in a couple of weeks, I have a birthday and we're going to do a little road trip to a couple of new yarn stores. Um, so I, I've just been waiting because I knew it was out there. And then I said, you know, let's go after I get back from Colorado and I get my design work done and whatever. So we're going to go, but I, I think that shop will do really well if they, yeah. if they stick to that. Right. Because I think there are people who are going back to, yep. to I don't want to knit with superwash anymore. Yeah. Well, I think it's yeah. also too, like, um, you know, I've had a lot of conversations with yarn shop owners and, and, you know, you, you can't stay open as a yarn shop selling the $30 indie dyer skeined yarn. Like, like you have to sell these workhorse cascade two twenties and the, um, oh, what was it? Um, uh, uh, Lopi things, things like that, that just are brown sheep, like the, the yep. woolly wool that's like just the workhorse yarn. I mean, those are the ones that are going to keep a shop open. That's what my new shawl is. Brown sheep. Yeah. They, I, I did, I did um, a bunch of patterns in my knit words book using their yarn. And, um, and so I have been in touch with them and, you know, that's family owned business, fa- family run mill in Nebraska. And, and so this, they sent me four skeins of this sock yarn, wool, woolly wool sock yarn. Like it is not wow. soft. And mm-hmm. they said, we want a shawl or accessory. And I was like, people want to go, oh, this is so soft. I want it around my neck. And they're not going to do that with this yarn, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it's beautiful. The colors the colors are beautiful. But it, it they're not going to feel it in the skein. Now, it does soften up when I wash it. Yeah. So I'm hoping that yeah. people will touch the shawl in the booth in, in Colorado. But that's exactly right. It would make yeah. perfect socks and hats. But they yeah. want to show that it can be other things. And I get that. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. What else do you have? Um, okay. So I thought, so I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I mentioned how I'm not a very big sweater knitter, but I am almost done with the, I think I was knitting it at sweater camp, the friendship pullover. Um, oh, yes. So this is out of, um, uh, Corey, the La Bien Ami Corey. La Bien Ami Corey Worsted. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yep. Yep. Uh-huh. I and own it's... some because it, it does, it, she didn't spell it like Corey, but. No, it's spelled I think different. It's for Corey Dale, right? Yeah, I think so. Yep. And it's, it's I, for Corey I Dale, which only, is. Only have the top to do, but the, the, um, co- the collar is really neat because you sort of knit it much taller and then sort of fold it in. So it's like a high, it's, it's beautiful. And it's like the last Hold part. Hold the cable up closer to the camera. Will you one more time? Yep. 
the cable mm -hmm. just yeah so we can see the crop yeah the crop oh yeah look at that you guys that's beautiful and is the color kind of just a gray yep it's just like a dark oatmeal -y gray but i will tell you one thing that i learned um and i should have known is that it's 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 hand dyed so i like it's all the same dye lot and I just thought okay well I'm gonna get to work and and I don't know if you can see it but there's like a definite um like this was one skein and then I think about here-ish I was like yep. oh boy um yep. and so I just left it I mean unless you're in really like interesting light like this is all definitely one skein right here and then yep. I um you know alternated skeins but um yeah I mean that was a good lesson learned that it's it 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 is it's just barely variegated, but enough that if you just do one skein and another, there's there's a a line for line. sure. Yep. Um. Let's see here. What else? I oh. So I think one of the things you said was like, what was your most favorite or most worn or something? So yeah. On. <laughs> these are not very pretty. Um. But I w wear them every day all winter long. Um. Oh. They are. Um, I knit them out of Noro um, Corian, and they are. Um, I'll I'll have to send you the pattern because I have it in my Ravelry, which my Ravelry name is Gin G I N. So you, you can look at any of these stuff. I log everything. Yes, because Ginny, you spelled Ginny G I N N Y, right? Yep. But yep, it's and, short for Virginia. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Right. But so these... that way, people will make the connection to Gin, not yeah. the true oh, yeah. big yeah. drinker. Well, I, I do love I do love a good gin and tonic, but um, <laughs> <laughs> so these are felted. So these you knit, and I mean they're like big enough to fit a yeti. They're like giant, like like oven mitt giant things, and then you just felt the bejesus out of them. So they're I mean they're like bulletproof warm, um, and so these if you have any wool that's feltable. Um, I think it would do really, really well with like a Malabrigo or brown sheep because uh, um, the mohair in it. But the, the super warm and, and when you felt them do a little bit. So um, I wear these all the time. Um, yeah, I here. wish we would get back to felting some more. I'm redoing some old, old patterns from back in the day because I just think it's such a fun process, you know, mm -hmm. and, and we had a huge felting era right where everybody was felting everything i have boxes of felted items uh -huh. i felted animals and and hats <laughs> and christmas stockings and oh ornaments christmas ornaments and stuff but i do have some bags and so i'm redoing a couple of those patterns and i knit a vest out of noro and exactly it was it hung past my knees in the back like it hung and now it's 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 just a cute little Best, I should get that out again. I don't know what box it's in down there, but um, because I haven't worn it in a number of years now, but it, it, it's just a fun, magical process, and it, it mm -hmm. turned out super cute. It, it, I could throw it on over everything, so, you know, yep. kind of like boiled, like a boiled wool little jacket. It, yeah, it's really felting is fun because oh, Noro is amazing. A Noro is uh, like it's just beautiful yarn, it's great to knit with. I've done um, actually. I don't have it here, so give me two seconds because it's right over there. Thing for um, Entrelock. So I don't know if anybody's done Entrelock, but um, so Entrelock is almost like this basket weave sort of situation. And because the the striping in Noro is so big, it it looks like you're intentionally doing like an orange, an orange, but it's all one it's all one skein one of yarn. Um, but yeah, this was. Um, That's really pretty. One of the classes actually that I taught at Inua was just Entrelock. It's and it's way easier um, than people think. It it I think it reads harder than it is. You just literally have to follow the pattern word for word, which is hard to do when your brain can't conceptualize what you're doing. Yeah. But yeah, no, absolutely. Um let's see here. I've done um the love note sweater. I think everybody's done. The love note sweater i haven't i can't i just can't really? decide on the openness of the yoke without something underneath it or will i always have to wear something white to kind of show the lace i don't know i just haven't figured out how i would style it if i would wear a dress i just haven't made it renee made a beautiful one beautiful 
Yeah. And I, yeah. This I one, haven't. I, I got stuck on that stupid ranunculus, which is not, <laughs> I made so many, I made four of those already. Whoa. Well, just cause it's fast. It's just fast and easy. I well, this the one's double. fast too. And I, yeah, that's what people say. I just haven't knit it yet. So what yeah, yarn did it, you use for that? Do you know? Oh gosh. It's on my Ravelry page. I think the, the, you knit it with like sock weight yarn and then like a, a mohair silk mohair. or something. Yeah. Yeah, and so it's it's interesting. I don't I don't know the light is kind of crappy in here, but the yarn, the sock yarn is um I know farmer's daughter and it's like a, a real orangey rust color. And, and then over top of it, I used a, like a cranberry mohair. So it's like two that you would kind of never put together, but it 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 turned out so nice. I really really like it and I Yeah, I uh, maybe I'll try to put a Do you have a picture on your Ravelry of it? Yeah. Yep. I I'll should. Try to, I'll yeah. try to take a picture of it because it's blowing out. It looks kind of brown. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. From our end. No, it's okay. You've got your window light is really bright and I can see your yarn behind you really well, but it's, it's fine. Well, oh, it's, there we go. <laughs> yeah. That or you sleep by awful, disgusting, dirty bedroom. It's <laughs> like, no, I'll clean it's fine. four by four corner of my room. <laughs> so. No, I'm yeah. I'm in um, the dining room, which where the hut should have um, dishes, but it do, it never does. We have people over, and they're like, "Oh, interesting display of <laughs> like this is where I podcast, <laughs> whatever." Oh my gosh! Um, oh, so one of my favorite things that I've ever knit, and I actually don't wear it that often because I don't know what I was thinking about with the colors, but it's something that I want to knit again so bad. Is um, Stephen West's color craving? Um, so it's it's knit like a gigantically long weird triangle oh my like, gosh I don't know if, you know it's, so it's, it's we were just it's talking like, about that oh we were um yeah so i it's, was just it's, talking about it on the podcast were you talking about how it looks like a giant vagina because yes what I think. and i wasn't <laughs> gonna say it that's what people were saying well i, never I did saw it, like other than his i never saw it like in person yeah. It's just because it's shaped like a V. I don't know why people were saying that, but. Well, I mean, it's to each their own, but, <laughs> but it was really, really fun to knit. And it's also really fun to wear actually, because you can use these big holes to like, you know, stuff it in different ways and you can have it like drape with like this corner showing or, or like this corner. Show. So it's really fun to wear and really fun to knit. I wish I had done it in not like, Hot yellow and hot pink. And yeah, but you did it in kind of Stephen West ones. colors. Like those are Stephen West style, you know. I, I guess you should just throw it on with a black 100%. with a black shirt and call it call it good, right? Yep. But the process of yep. it, which you 100%. love, was and that's the thing that you like the most. So that makes total yep. sense, right? You liked the yep. process of it. Yep. Are you a shawl really wearer? Fun. Yep. Are you a shawl wearer? I want to be. I, hear that I, I all really the time. want to be because I have, I know I have so many knit, like, um, let me see here. If I have the find, find your fade or whatever that one was. Yep. Uh, I don't know. It was about a bunch, a bunch of different, um, sock yarn. Oh, it's really pretty. I love your colors. Yeah. And so I, I, I faded it from like, okay, there was some yellow in this. And so I did yeah. yellow and then. There was some yellow in this, and then this had some turquoise. So then I did turquoise, and yep, this had some yep. turquoise. And so I, <clears throat> I loved knitting it, and it, and it came out really beautiful. But I don't know. Some of these bigger shawls are so heavy, and I can't. Um, I don't know. I like. I feel like I'm like. <laughs> they're. I love knitting them, but I don't know. Wearing them, they're just. They're like wearing a giant. Yeah, I hear that all the time. I um, I that's why I started doing my um shawl styling videos for mm. to show people how to style them. But even when I put them on, like my pressed flowers, it's mm -hmm. like wearing an elephant on my neck, right? Yeah. Like it, it's They're just heavy. like uh, I don't know. Like it really needs to be a pajama shawl, like where I just wrap it around my shoulders at night. Yep. Because yes. I don't think I'm going to go out. I would look very stylish walking down Fifth Avenue in, in yep. New York City in a snow, like trickling snow in Central Park or whatever. Yeah. Like I would look, but I, I couldn't go inside and wear it. I would just yeah. die. Like, it, you know, it's yeah. there's so much. I totally agree. 
I wanted mm -hmm. to knit that. I just wish I would have knit the hat at the time now, right? To yeah. see how it was knit because it's pretty. Mm -hmm. And I did a couple styling things and I can style it cute. But like even today, we've got snow on the ground. It's it's cold out, but the sun is shining in the house and it's we're hot. Mm -hmm. Like we're warm mm -hmm. in the house right now. And so yeah. I, yeah, the big shells. And that's what I hear from people all the time is that they love knitting them, but they don't wear them. Yeah. Which is unfortunate. I, I, I think my compromise is I, I am a humongous um, cowl wearer. I wear cowls all the time. And so um, I brought another example, one that I thought you'd think w would be funny. Um, I've, I've knit this out of um, actually Kiviet. It's like a, um, beautiful mustard colored kiviet um and i wear it all the time um i also at the time of knitting this got a um golden retriever puppy and um i don't know if you can see the inside oh yeah yeah so what i did was i knit this beautiful kiviet heart <laughs> oh. to put on it um i mean i didn't it was just i mean he tore it to shreds i don't know if you can see just so anyway it has this cute little purple heart but I, I I wear it all the time because it just you know it's so just oh drapey and light and so warm I love it yep yep yeah Chevy ate the back of but, my pinky swear hat that I showed on the podcast last week yeah. big chunk out of the bottom of it I had to try to fix it and take pictures yeah. for the photography with the little chunk in the back so we wouldn't you know see it all everyone knows because I tell everybody this is the uh -huh. hat that Chevy chewed. And I was yep. sitting right there, you know, puppies. Ugh, I was right there and I didn't, I was at the desk and I, he was very quiet. I should have known. Uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> I should have known in that moment. Yeah. Yep. So that, what, do you know what pattern that was? Oh my goodness, Corey. It's on my, it is on my Ravelry. Um, I'll look it up know. and link it in the show notes. No problem. Yeah. We'll look it's it up. In I mean, I've got my Ravelry open now. I just don't know if I can find it fast enough. No, but it, yeah, yeah. And all I, I'm pretty good about logging all of my stuff in Ravelry. So it's there somewhere. Um, I know it a, a pretty long time ago, but um, let's see I here. love that too. I thought. You should probably, you could probably search for cow if you think it was named cow. Um, but I mean, yeah, I, I uh, couldn't exist without logging my projects because okay. I go back and look at the yarn or the pattern or re-knit it or make a, I look at them all the time I go back because yep. I know they're there and I think people I have to don't realize that they would go back and look at them because they can't so they don't but because they're there I you know my mom wore something when I was home last weekend and I was like what was the name of that sweater I could not remember it and I went, got home and I just looked it up just to refresh my memory and I knew it would be there um yep. yeah it, yeah I, I think that I I'm just very meticulous at making sure I just leave them on the desk until I get them logged in. And I know well, people have laundry baskets that they leave them in and they're like, they are stacking up here until they get put on. Rally. <laughs> and I, I think Corey, you're right. Like, especially with some of these intricate ones and, and me being a process knitter, like I just, I, I literally have things on the needles and this is embarrassing to say, but like that are probably 10 years old. And so if I don't have Ravelry to go back and look at like what pattern it was, what needle, because I steal needles from projects and put them on waste yarn because, you know, or else yep. I'll have like 17 size sixes, which I already do. Um, but so if I don't log those things, like I'll, I'll just have to frog it because I, I just, I won't remember where I'm at, what pattern I used, what needles I was using, where I was in the pattern. I, I uh, take really good notes. Absolutely. I, I, yeah, no, for sure. I have a, a whip tree right there. It's a coat rack, but all my bags are hanging on it with all my whips in it. And it's just a visual reminder. I just need that visual reminder. And they're all at the top of my Ravelry too. Like, because when yep. I open it, then I'm like, yep. look, you have 12 things to finish and you're not getting to them. So how many seriously are you going to cast on this weekend? I love casting uh -huh. on. <laughs> oh, I mean, thing. I love 100 percent. Yeah, yeah, I, I just, love starting. Like a, and, and I want and I, I, I want to for right now, like I want to have a muscle bird hat on the needles kind of at all times, just because it is like my purse knitting. Like I yep. just. Yep. I can take it anywhere. And I just cast this one off maybe like three or four days ago. So 
I need That's to find pretty. a- That's pretty. What yarn did you use for that? That's this is um, spun right round. Um, hmm. And they're out of actually my hometown, Rochester, New York. Um, and so I got um, this yarn at uh, a uh, yarn shop called Liftbridge Yarns in Fairport, New York. I call them my my LYS, my local yarn shop, because whenever I go back home to visit um, my parents, um, I always stop there and they like, I mean, I see them twice a year, but they act like it was yesterday every time I walk in and I go to knit night there. And it's like, it brings me back to like 2018 when, when Inua yeah. was still open. So yeah, um, yeah they're what a great- What does Inua shop. stand for? You know, I think it's, um, uh, um, I don't know. I think it's a spirit, spirit, like an Alaskan spirit. I should know, and I'm probably going to get it wrong, but I, I think it is, um, yeah. Alaskan native word. An for, Alaskan word. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's so nice to have a community and of, of like yarny people and a local yarn shop. And, and we just haven't had anything like that since, since they closed in 2018. There is a new, I will say there is a new yarn shop, um, that's new in the last year or two that's opened up um, in Fairbanks. It's very small. Um, that she has very, very nice yarn. Like she has a lot of like Libya Nimi and um, uh, uh, Malabrigo and, um, you know, um, just really, really nice yarn. I just haven't I don't know. I, I haven't gotten in with that that crowd, but I have been in there and they do have really nice stuff. But, you yeah. know, you can't it's I don't know it's it'll just never be Inua so I like can't I don't know I can't bring yep. myself to, like, yeah uh, my local <laughs> closed a year ago and and I could just run it up there it was still 15 maybe 10 or 15 minutes yeah for me but yeah at all the other ones I they're all within an hour to an hour and 15 minutes and I have 14 yep. that I can go to oh, but wow. they're not wow. gonna be the local they're just not going to be the one that i can just buzz to they're all further away i just have to a trek and minneapolis is so big that you know a lot of the suburbs have one because yeah. that's like a whole small city unto itself but we don't have one anymore just kind of a bummer yeah, yeah. okay do you have anything else you want to share um because we can wrap this up we're just you know we're getting close to an hour i think and yeah, um, I mean, I, I just brought a lot of stuff. I'll show you my, um, I'll show you this, this scarf that I made. It was one of the very first things I ever knit. Okay. Um, and it's out of, it's out of a pattern. I... Yeah, it's out of a pattern that my grandma actually used to make Afghans out of. Um, and it's like a feather and fan. Like, I couldn't even tell you. It's a pattern that she made. But I used to call it my cat food scarf. Um, because it <laughs> looks like meow mix. <laughs> um, but it's out of like wool that I, I think I got at a garage sale. Couldn't tell you what the hell it was. Um, I washed it so it's felted at, in some areas. Like it's just, um, <laughs> but it looks like meow mix. And I just would always call it my cat food scarf. Um, but it's one of the first knits that I, I ever knit. And, um, and it's impressive because it's definitely chevron. So you you had to do increases and decreases yeah, for sure. Yeah, sure so, did. Yeah, sure did. Yeah. But um but yeah it's full of cat hair and dog hair now but yeah i just i was digging through my my finished objects and i was like oh gosh this is an oldie but goodie i'll bring this one yeah, out and show. no i was just gonna say this was really fun if you have something else you want to show otherwise we'll wrap it up yeah i think i mean i i, I brought other things but i think those are probably that's probably a good spot to, to wrap up yeah. on. Sorry, my internet. Yeah. Excellent. Funny, no, but... this is really fun. I really appreciate you taking the time. I know you had to scramble this morning because I had the, you had the time wrong. And I, you know, I just sent out the thing yesterday because I had forgotten to set up the Zoom. So I was like, oh, you need to make a Zoom meeting so that we can get on tomorrow. So this will come out um, a week from Tuesday. Um, so thank you so much. That, Tell yeah. the kids hi. I, know I will. I've never met them, but, and someday Ross and I want to come to Alaska. So uh, we, well, he's got a, he thinks he needs to retire before we take these trips. And I said, no, you need to, we need to do it now before I have to have more body parts replaced. <laughs> yeah. Do and it now. so, yeah, we'll keep in touch and I'll just say goodbye and thanks everybody yeah. for watching and thanks for coming on, Ginny. Alrighty. Thank you. Okay. Bye.